Hello students, today we will be learning about rivers and rains in the second chapter of the 7th class. All life on earth is very crucial and dependent on water. As you know, over 71% of earth's surface is covered with water. We depend on water for growing crops, but we do not get water uniformly over the year. It is also not available uniformly all over the earth nor is the quality of water the same everywhere as we all know the rivers in certain areas flow throughout the year because it is fed by glaciers such as ganga yamuna and bahmaputra which is coming from china as well at the same time such rivers which are rain fed which comes from uh, niligiri hills like godavari and uh, it's prominently not uh, full throughout the year and we already know we need water for cooking we need water for growing crops so Indians gradually go from one crop in year sometimes they if the rain is quite prominent and they if they have underground water they grow at least three crops a year it depends upon water availability of course uh, let's discuss the following in the class as we know we don't have class right now so i'll be sending you few questions online uh, on whatsapp or wherever and we will discuss about on what months you get rain in which part of town or village we get rain and do you have more water or less water as we discuss that we will know where uh, water is available and how much good how much water is available how, what is the quality of water, is it drinkable, is it polluted and all that shall be discussed in the whatsapp group and as some students have called me but some students didn't call me right now so let us jump into rainfall right away sun, clouds and rainfall these are the three words which is necessary for rainfall after the unbearable heat of April, May and June comes the rainy season which last for few months do you know what causes rains where do the rain bearing clouds come from discuss whatever you know or think about this in the whatsapp group so i'll be asking you these questions and this will, this might be the homework for the day do you know what causes rains and where do the rain bearing clouds come from so it's very uh, quite honest questions and where do the rains come from? It comes from the sky, right? Because uh, the clouds gradually are formed because of evaporation. So let's jump into what is evaporation. Before we go into evaporation, let us discuss a story. Pranavi woke up early in the morning. She needed to take a bath in hot water. So she heated water in a dish over fire. As the water heated up, water vapors touched the lid and with the help of outside cold air vapor became water drops and stuck to the lid of the dish when she removed the lid some of the water drops fell down into the dish observing this she realized that water evaporates and later it becomes condensed into water by cooling you might have observed this in your home as well whenever you are making tea or whenever you are boiling water or if there is a hot chicken curry or mutton curry or uh, sambar once you put a lid on top of those liquid curries or liquid water gradually this uh, water starts to form a into a gaseous molecule and it starts to stick over the lid and this water vapor once you open it it condenses because of the outside temperature if it is cool gradually it gets condensed and it forms liquid water so there are three forms of water liquid water is known as just water and whereas uh, solid water is known as ice whereas uh, water which is in gaseous format is known as water vapor the story of rain begins with water vapor what is water vapor when you dry your wet clothes in the open you see that water disappears for a from a uh, disappears after a while and the clothes dry similarly if you keep some water in a plate it dries up in couple of days actually water in the clothes 
or in a plate becomes water vapor and mixes with the air through a process called evaporation so even when water is not boiling there is evaporation you might have seen one more example whenever you have washed your clothes and dried it outside after couple of hours it would become dry because the water would gradually evaporate it converts to liquid format to gaseous format that gaseous format the process is known as evaporation and the gaseous format is known as water vapor the gas form of water is known as water vapor so keep that in mind too <laughs> so there are several water bodies on the earth surface you already know what are the water bodies they are oceans rivers lakes etc this is a constant evaporation of water from this water bodies in fact wherever there is moisture evaporation evaporation will take place there is evaporation from our bodies from trees from plants and soil the process of evaporation speeds up with the increase in temperature you might have seen evaporation going on everywhere if you give me some examples now we can't talk because it's online classes if it is in class i would have asked you give me some examples for evaporation so the examples for evaporation are you can uh, put some clothes wet clothes under the sun and the water would evaporate at the same time even even plants also uh, have water in them and this water also gets evaporated that is why the leaves of those trees fall down during summer because the trees try to save their water they want to preserve their water that is why they shed their leaves so that's a point to notice that is why the plants shed their leaves during summer so that they could save water and even the soil also evaporates water even trees evaporate water right so what increases the speed of evaporation it is because of the temperature if temperature is more the evaporation speeds up if the temperature is slow or low the evaporation is slowed down 